Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the strace command on Linux to trace the different syscalls or system calls of Linux binaries while they're running. So we're going to be looking at this from the reverse engineering perspective. For example, if we have a binary that is potentially malicious and we would like to trace all of the different system calls that it's actually making, this is what we would use to do that. This is pretty similar to using Procmon on the Windows side, if you're familiar with that. If you're trying to just get a really quick idea of what the application is doing while it's executing. So let's get right into it. I have the man page up for this already. The command we're going to be using is strace. And as I said, this is going to be tracing your different system calls and signals. And here are all of the different flags that we can actually use if you're trying to filter or change some of the output that strace is actually tracking. And if you're trying to look at the man page, what you can also do is if you have a Linux machine, you can just type in man strace. And this is actually going to give you the same output as the web page that I just showed you. So let's get into a couple examples. I'm going to pick some of the more important flags that I tend to use more when I'm trying to reverse engineer a sample and just show you how you can use those if you're trying to analyze a particular application. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to trigger a program. We're going to use strace to trace the syscalls that we expect and then we're going to look at that output. So I have two programs that I've already written right here. Let's just look at the first one. It's going to be write file.c. All this is going to be doing is just printing to the console. Then it's going to be opening a file, printing hello world to that file. Then it's going to be printing again to the console done once it's finished. So we expect to see a few different syscalls right here. And if you're taking the compiled executable, and throwing it inside of something like Ghidra, that's going to actually show you the direct system calls that this is using. I'm going to close this out. And let's actually compile our program. So GCC, write file.c, and we'll just name the binary write file. And now we can see our executable program right here. And then remember the actual command was s trace. And then we're going to do the name of the binary where we're tracing the system calls. So this write file. And then we're going to run it. And you might be a little overwhelmed by some of this output. So let me pull up the original program that we wrote one more time so we can kind of go back and forth and see exactly how this is working. So I'm going to do cat write file. Whoop. Not the binary version. Let's do cat write file.c, which is we want to see the source code. And if you notice, we have a printf here for when it's actually starting the program. But if we go up to our s trace output right here, we actually don't see this starting the program until pretty late on in our s trace output. And this is because this before is actually showing you all of the different system calls that the system is doing when it's actually loading and mapping that binary into memory, changing the protections so it can actually execute the program that you've passed it. So most of this you can actually just ignore if you're just trying to look at the behavior of the binary because that's pretty standard. It's just loading it. So whatever. But we actually want to start our analysis once it gets to the actual functionality, which is going to be somewhere around right here. So moving on, I want to show you how we can actually write this output to a file, because if you're noticing, this is really irritating to read. And let's say you have a program that does a lot more than just writing to a file and printing to the console. You're going to want to be able to save this to a text file so that you can actually see the output and maybe search it or filter it better. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our command one more time, this strace. But we're going to add this dash o flag 
if we see dash O, you can actually pass the name of a file that you would like to write the S trace output to. And this is going to contain all of the data that was previously written to the console. So really simple, just pass the dash O and then we'll do out write file.txt maybe. And this is going to run that. So this is our output from our program, remember? Remember we were printing to the console two times and it was actually writing this myoutput.txt file, which we can see right here. So one really important note is if you're using this to actually analyze malware, this will definitely detonate the sample. So just be prepared and have your actual malware analysis environment set up and just know you're going to be running the malware if you're using strace because this is actually doing dynamic analysis of the application. But let's take a look at our outwritefile.txt since this is our new strace output. So I'm going to open this up in Vi. And here we see a lot prettier of a representation of all of the different commands that we had inside of this application. Next thing to note, if you're trying to analyze the output, you're going to see a lot of weird equals something like this. This equals is actually showing you the return value of the system call. So for example, if I look at the return value of write, this is actually writing, I think, 17 characters to the console. So the return value of the write syscall is going to be the number of characters that it wrote, which is 17 in this case. Or if we look at another example, the return value of close when it's successful is zero, which we see equals zero right here. And then these are probably just returning pointers to the memory mapped location. So that's just what the equals random stuff actually means. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to filter some of the output that we're actually seeing right here. Or, for example, only trace particular system calls that you might be interesting, interested in. So let me close out of this. And the command is going to be dash E as the flag and then trace equals either the system call that you want to use and see only or maybe some that you would like to exclude. So let me pick one. Maybe I want to see all of the different opens that this might be using, or let's actually pick write since that's easy to see. So I'm going to tr trace just this write system call and the command is going to be s trace. And if we see dash e expression, this is going to allow us to add a conditional expression of what we want to actually be filtering for and what we actually want to be tracing or not tracing. So we have our dash e flag and then the syntax is going to be trace equals and then the system call that we want to be tracing. So close is what I picked here. So you could do pretty much any of the system calls that you actually see right here, like read, pread64, mmap, anything like that. Let me just try running this and we'll see what the output looks like. So it's trace dash E, and then the trace is the system call we want to trace. So let's see. And here we go. So uh, we actually picked close. I meant to pick right, but that's totally fine. This is actually all of the different close system calls that this application made. And if I wanted to filter by right, I could also do that. And some more interesting output here is all of the text that we're actually printing to the console and writing to the file. So that's how we want to filter on particular system calls. But let's say we want to exclude particular system calls. For example, there's a lot of calls up here that I just don't care about. For example, this pread64 I'm not worried about for this particular case. So let's say I wanted to exclude that or exclude a couple of these. I'm going to copy that. And now the command becomes bang and then the system call. And this is going to print out every system call that this application makes except this pread64. So now we see no pread64 and it's printing everything else that was actually made and called. And if we want to do multiple of these, 
Let's say we have a set of system calls that we just don't care about. We can just pass another dash E flag or optionally there's quite a bit of syntax that will actually work here, but this is my favorite. So trace equals, and we'll do not. Let's say we don't care about mmap for today. And now our output's getting a little bit smaller every time. You see we have no mmap and we have no pread64. So we're successfully excluding all of these different system calls. Now let's see if we wanted to just count all of the number of different system calls that this application is making. This is going to be the dash C flag. This is really helpful if you're trying to understand the actual capabilities of a malware sample, just high level. Let's say you wanna know if it does a socket connection or anything like that. This dash C flag will just count all of the different times that it's making these unique system calls. So the dash C flag is right here. And I'm gonna try running that and just see what output we get for this. So I'm gonna do strace dash C, and then we'll do dot slash write file to run our executable and run that. And you can see all of the different system calls that this is making. For example, it's calling mmap seven times. And what might be of interest to us is that it's actually writing three times, two times to the console, and then one to an actual file. So this just gives you a really good overview of what the potential capabilities of this application actually is. Now, one thing to note is that strace by default does not actually follow any of the child processes that might be created via the fork system call, for example. So if you're analyzing some malware and you know some behavior is happening, but you're not actually seeing it in the strace output, don't be confused, this is actually by design. So there's actually just one flag that you need to add to be able to additionally trace those particular system calls. So if we use this dash F flag, this is actually going to force S trace to follow any of the child processes that might be generated via the fork command. Let me just control F, we'll see if we can find this dash, dash F somewhere, yep. Here we go. So, or you could also write it as follow forks, but dash F is actually going to follow different processes created by the fork command. So let me show you an example of that and just see how we can miss some of the output if we don't include this and how we can actually get all of this in the same S trace output if we actually include this. I'm gonna go back to my Ubuntu virtual machine right here. And I've actually already created a executable called fork example. And let's just take a look at that and then we'll compile that and see. So I'm gonna do vi fork example. And all this is doing is it's printing out hello from child. If it detects that this fork is the actual child process that's created, or it's gonna be printing hello from parent if this is not the child process that is executing. Let me show you what that looks like if we actually include the tracing of the child process or if we actually exclude this. So I'm gonna close out of this and let's just compile our executable real quick. Dash O, we'll call this fork example. And then here it is, right here is my executable. And I'm going to output this to a file just for ease of reading. And so we can actually search the output of strace. So I'm going to do strace. And then remember the flag was dash O for output. And then I'll do fork out dot text. And then we actually want to run the fork example. And I'm not going to include this dash F flag initially. So we're not going to be tracing that child fork call. So we'll run this and we see that the executable is printing this hello from child, hello from parent. But if we actually go to this fork out dot text, we can see that it's showing the call to hello from parent, but we don't see any call to hello from child. And if I search the word child, this is actually not found. But if I search parent, we can actually find this particular instance of it. So that means we're not tracking these system calls for the child process. 
I'm going to close out of this and let's try it one more time, including this dash F flag so we can actually get the behavior of both the parent and the child process in our S trace output. I'm going to run the same command, except I'm going to also include this dash F to follow the child. So we're still getting our same output, hello from parent, hello from child, but now if we open up our fork out.txt, we can actually see that there's a lot of additional behavior inside of this. And if we look, let's see, here is hello from child. So now we're actually getting all of the different system calls created by that child process from the fork command. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we showed how we could use the strace command to actually trace the different syscalls made from different Linux binaries while they were executing. And we showed how we could add different flags to actually filter some of the output or only trace different particular system calls. We also showed how we could write them some of the output to a file, and we went through some of the different format options of being able to read that particular S trace file that's actually generated. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wide, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yes. I think I can get this one. Yes. Yes.